the mainstream media would have you believe we're living happier, healthier, longer lives than our past ancestors, that they were dropping dead from heart attacks in their 30s, and every other baby was miscarried. As usual, the opposite of what they say is closer to the truth, and we won't be talking about you-know-what today for obvious reasons. This is just about miscarriages in general. If you go to modern conventional wisdom, aka asking doctors why miscarriages are so common, they will give you reasons that aren't really explanations, saying it's genetic, random, making up complicated medical terminology for probable lifestyle issues, saying it's from long-term health conditions such as diabetes, thyroid disease, heart disease, hypertension, all of which are typically blamed on genetics, medication and treatment being the only solution. Now, there are some obvious ones such as smoking, drinking, and drugs, but the majority of women suffering from miscarriages do no such thing. So we have these super duper smart doctors, authority figures that we look to for answers, yet if those people are so reliable, why do statistics state the worsening of the problem? So here I have several studies, the titles broken down into categories, and I'm just gonna give a brief synopsis. If you wanna read the whole thing, by all means, you can look it up. Trends in self-reported spontaneous abortions, 1970s through 2000s. The increase in the rate of miscarriage over the past decades is a surprising finding given advances in prenatal care. I guess they're not advances. News report documents trends in births, abortions, and miscarriages. U.S. women are currently averaging two live births, 0.7 induced abortions, and 0.5 miscarriages and stillbirths, which is kind of crazy. Almost 20% of all pregnancies end up in miscarriage from that. I think the real numbers are a lot higher. National Vital Statistics Report, June 20th, 2012. Pregnancies are down 10%, miscarriages are up 3%. And these studies are incredibly hard to find, by the way. You know, they wouldn't want everyone knowing our modern lifestyles are making fertility worse. Everything, the reports seem really hidden. And if these doctors and authority figures were so smart, how come there's never been an official diagnosis of a specific nutrient deficiency for a miscarriage. If these people were truthful and doing their job, we would have a list of all of the miscarriage outcomes for specific vitamin deficiencies or a list of the birth defects from specific vitamin, mineral, omega fatty acid deficiencies. So we know the problem's getting worse, and in the video I did last Wednesday on prenatal care, I explained how to address all of the necessary lifestyle factors, reducing radiation, increasing vitamin levels, but you don't have to take my word for it. There are plenty of peer-reviewed scientific studies that come to similar conclusions. Meta-analyses on the effect of the maternal vitamin D level on the risk of spontaneous pregnancy loss, aka SPL. In a subgroup analysis, an extremely low vitamin D level was significantly associated with an increased risk of SPL in the first trimester decreased serum vitamin D levels in early spontaneous pregnancy loss. Decreased serum vitamin D levels among childbearing aged women with the failed clinical pregnancy's history may predispose for increased risk for pregnancy loss, aka vitamin D deficiency kills babies. Vitamin D insufficiency is associated with increased risk of first trimester miscarriage in the ODENS child cohort. We found an association between vitamin D and first trimester miscarriages, suggesting vitamin D is a modifiable risk factor for miscarriage. Hmm, wonder why we've never heard this before. Now, why is that? The answer is actually common sense. A developing fetus needs nutrients just as a seed placed in the soil needs nutritious soil to develop, to grow, and if the woman doesn't have enough vitamin D, the woman's body knows it cannot adequately form a child and therefore aborts it on its own. Some nutrients are far more sensitive than others, 
So it's easy to understand that a severe deficiency in some specific nutrients is a partial explanation for our incredibly high and rising miscarriage rates. And one interesting thing to mention here is, you know, a vegan diet or just the standard American diet's fear of cholesterol could be making it so people aren't absorbing vitamin D. There are a lot of precursor nutrients that are required for the absorption of others. And then we can move on to cell phones, radio frequency, radiation. Use of mobile phone during pregnancy and the risk of spontaneous abortion. Exposure to electromagnetic fields of cell phones increasingly occurs, but the potential influence on spontaneous abortion has not been thoroughly investigated. In a case control study, 292 women had an unexplained spontaneous abortion. Two data collection forms were completed. One was used to collect data about socioeconomic and obstetric characteristics, medical and reproductive history, and lifestyles. Another was used to collect data about the use of cell phones during pregnancy. Our results suggest that use of mobile phones can be related to the early spontaneous abortions. Imagine telling a modern mother that her child is going to be shorter, stupider, and uglier because she uses a cell phone. See how well that goes over. What we shouldn't have to argue about or debate as much, you know, as something invisible like radiation, is the necessity of animal foods in growth and development. Impacts of maternal dietary protein intake on fetal survival, growth, and development. Low maternal dietary protein intake can cause embryonic losses and reduce postnatal growth due to a deficiency in specific amino acids that are important for cell metabolism and function. Regulation of maternal dietary protein intake during pregnancy is essential for proper embryonic survival, growth, and development. But keep in mind, that's just what they found with that study. You know, animal foods are so complex, there are so many vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, that you could arguably correlate every single nutritional element of an animal product to some sort of potential miscarriage issue. The amount of nutrition needed to birth a living child, one that's barely alive, is far from birthing a perfectly developed child. And if you want to ask why, well, these psychos, lunatics in charge don't want competition. And if you can keep people stupid, sick, and brain damaged from birth, you know, that seems like the best way to eliminate the competition and have basically a class of slaves to work for you. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this kind of helps you guys you know, piece together where I'm coming to my conclusions from. It's, it's the years and years and years of actually looking at scientific research. And then I kind of just summarize things off the top of my head most of the time. Although you can always find something to back it up if you know where to look. Uh, so if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, if you can please sign up for the newsletter on frank defoncom you can check out all of my other businesses on there. And I will see you guys for tomorrow's video. Mm -hmm.